Jesus taught us something very profound that in dealing with storms, I wrote here, rebuking the wind or the spirit, as I have taught you, should be your first action. Please look up. One of the most classic information we need to learn about storms is that storms are made of two elements. Please look up. Storms are made of first the wind and then the water or the waves. Are we together? I have taught you here that the water is the visible part of the storm. That is the one that can shake the boats. That is the one that can shake your destiny. The water there talks about the physical environment, the physical situation. But that powering that water is the wind. Usually the invisible part, the spirit that is behind what is driving your life to perdition, to pain, to fear. And if you are dealing with storms and your focus is just the water, meaning the office situation, meaning the situation of your health or your marriage, you are dealing with the storm wrongly. In dealing with storms, the first approach is the wind before the water. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that Jesus, verse 39, when he arose, the Bible never said he rebuked the water. No. The water was only a slave. The water was a puppet to the wind. If the wind were calm, the water will also be calm. If the wind were boisterous, the water will reflect it. That means what is happening in your office is not an office issue. It's a spirit issue. Listen very carefully. What is working in your finances? There may be a place where you are neglecting the laws of finances, but more than that, it's not just a financial issue. It can be a spirit issue. Powering every storm that you see is the wind. The Bible says Jesus rebuked the wind. He did not rebuke the water. The water does not necessarily need to be rebuked. The water is a reaction. The anger in your office is a reaction. The antagonism and the enmity among people is a reaction. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. We deal with storms by rebuking the wind, then speaking to the water. Rebuking the wind, then speaking to the water. One more time. Rebuking the wind and speaking to the water. Because the wind usually typifies spirits. There are spirits, elemental spiritual forces that are back of the pain, the tragedy, the repetition repetitive circles in people's lives and most times because we are usually sensual in dealing with the matters of life we focus only on the water so for instance you keep discussing the business why is this favor happening around my life i'm a hard-working businessman why is it that i will get an information that by next week the contract is coming only for me to find out that it's been given to someone else because if you focus on the rage of the sea and forget that the sea is only a victim of the wind storms i repeat again are made up of winds it is not the anger or the problem between a husband and a wife. That is just the sea. I can assure you there is a spirit behind it. The disfavor that happens in your life, surrounded by helpers, yet ignored by the same. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of headache. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of unemployment. Watch this. When Jesus comes, he doesn't just talk to the issue of your finances and all of these issues. He goes to the spirits that are behind them, masquerading behind a lot of things. Whilst you are holding your certificate, dropping it from table to table, office to office, there are spirits raging all kinds of things. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are certain winds that need to be rebuked. For someone, that wind has shifted your family from joy to pain. You have found yourself moving from one place to the other. All kinds of things have happened, swaying your boat, and you are in fear right now. Water has even gotten into the boat, and they walk Jesus. Don't forget that those guys were farmers. Carest thou, not that we perish. Hallelujah. Jesus teaches us how to deal with storms the first thing to do is that there is a spirit behind that hatred there is a spirit behind that poverty there is a spirit behind whatever it is he rebuked the wind and as I have taught you here 
when he got to gathering the bible reveals to us the reason why what you call the wind i hope you know they were the spirits because he was coming to gadara to bring salvation to that city so the spirits came and were causing a lot of commotion hoping that the boat would capsize could it be that the fight in your destiny and that which has impeded you now is simply because you are the first to rise. Some of you, you are the ones that I have told you this thing many times. There is a mantle upon your life and you are the one who has been mandated to be the deliverer of your family and the storms will leave every other person and come to you. You may not even know why. For some of you, you say, who did I offend? That is not an intelligent way. That's not spiritual intelligence. It's not about who are you offending. It's about where you are going to. The story starts in verse 35 by saying, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Let us go to the place of breakthrough. Let us go to the place of increase. Let us go to the place of plenty. The axe head that fell. Remember, the sons of the prophet came and met Elisha, their mentor, and he said, where we meet with you is too straight for us. Let us go beyond the Jordan. It was the desire for increase and expansion that led to the falling of the axe head. The attack on your life is it not because of the seriousness of your prayer life? The moment you realize that you were the one God was going to use to deliver your family, that that mantle of a deliverer after the order of Moses was upon your life, all kinds of attacks began to come around your life. My Bible says, but thanks be to God, which causes us to triumph always, not sometimes, always. He says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. What does Jesus do when he comes? He does not come to negotiate with storms. When Jesus comes, listen, the Bible tells us that Jesus was in the boat, but his presence in the boat did not automatically bring deliverance. Now, this is where I want you to listen. Jesus in your boat is hope that you will not be lost, but water will still be entering your boat until you know what to do with Jesus there. It took the effort of the people. The Bible says even in unbelief, they took effort to wake him. It was a sign of humility. Waking Jesus is proof that your intelligence has been stretched. You have done your best. You do not have the power in yourself to save yourself. Don't assume that just because Jesus is in your boat, he will automatically know that he's a right to help you. There is always a demonstration of humility. The Lord is night them that call upon him not them that are where he is there in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart and it says lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him simple but profound statement do you know what it means to acknowledge to acknowledge means to recognize his value and his usefulness not just his presence when you acknowledge a man is more than recognizing his presence you can recognize the presence of a man without acknowledging that person to acknowledge that person is to recognize and celebrate that person as touching his usefulness to you so Jesus was in the boat, but whether he was useful to them or not would depend on their sense of responsibility. They would have jumped out of the boat, it was an option. They would have committed suicide, it was an option. They would have been offended to kill him and insult him, it was an option. The Bible says they went and woke him. They did not wake him because he was weak. They woke him because it will always take faith. So God is there, but your faith needs to let him know, Father arise, I, I, he cannot assume that you need his help. You must call upon him as a sign of humility. There are many of you who are conscious of the ever abiding presence of God, but you do not know how to engage God to arise and perform for you. It takes humility. I will call upon the Lord, not assume that he is there. I will call upon the Lord. Jesus was near ba blind Bartimaeus but proximity did not equal a miracle blind Bartimeo had to call thou son of David have mercy on me the one who calms the storm can be around your finances can be around your marriage can be around your children but you do not call upon him he assumes that you are saying I am in control of everything and he will respect you some of you have come here you are aware that Jesus is here wonderful but that is not enough to give you a miracle Waking him is a sign 
of a declaration of humility from you. Lord, you need to arise over my case. The Bible says there was this judge who did not fear God nor regard men. And there was this widow who had been so victimized. She walked on to the man. The awareness that there was a judge who could bail her out did not bail her out. She had to take responsibility to go to the judge and say, avenge me my adversary. This she did once and again. And the Bible says the judge had to tell himself that though I do not fear God nor regard men, but this woman continues to wear me by her continual coming. She can weary me by her persistence. Apostle, but I prayed in January, pray again. How many of you have seen how they wake someone from sleep? Sometimes, do you just tap someone once and he wakes up? Especially for some of you who sleep like you are dead. Even a punch will not wake you. There are people who sleep like they are dead. They talk while they are still sleeping. And you'll be thinking they are already awake. Oh, how are you? God bless you. And yet they are sleeping. They are not even aware of what they are saying. Just because someone is talking does not mean he's awake. To awake somebody means to bring him to the awareness of your situation. The awareness of the environment. Is someone learning tonight?